There's a classic case of a person waiting to die. The story of how poverty has deprived a one-year-old baby the chance to get operated on as a tumor in the head continues to grow. Nancy M. F. Adradosi has the rest of the story. According to reports by the World Poverty Clock, more than 2.8 million Ghanaians, representing about 10% of the population, are living in extreme poverty. The vast number are said to be living below the global poverty line. This means such people cannot afford to spend 10 Ghana cities a day. That is the reality of life for 25-year-old Ruth Akabo, who lives at Ewutubreku in the central region. She is seated in front of her room, barefooted, with her one-year-old baby lying on her thigh. It is 3 p.m. and Ruth has barely eaten anything. He gives me seven Ghana CDs. The school takes five Ghana CDs for feeding my son. The remaining two CDs, I buy Milo and bread. Her husband, Francis, is a truck pusher and earns very little after a day's toil at the market. It is almost as if poverty is written on every crack in the walls of this house. He's a porter and makes some money. He earns very little, so my mom sometimes takes care of me. Ruth has managed to take her first son, Abraham, to school. During my interview with Ruth, little Abraham got home from school very hungry. All he could get was a mixture of gari and water without sugar. What do you want to eat? I want to eat rice. What is even disturbing is that Ruth's one-year-old son has a growth in his head which looks like a size of a tennis ball. But Ruth and the husband are so poor they cannot take their little one to the hospital. I don't have any money to take him to the hospital. I'm very disturbed. Nobody wants to handle him. They say it's a curse. A few meters away from Ruth's house is a pharmacy. Its owner, Forsen, has been providing antibiotics to the little boy for free. Okay, um, I was here when the mother brought the child, and uh, when I checked it, it looked uh, initially like an ordinary boil. So uh, I recommended uh, a medication they can use to take care of the swelling. Uh, but they couldn't afford it. So the mother said she was going and she'll be back later to come and buy the medication. About a day or two later, I decided to check on them because I didn't have any record of them coming back to buy the medication. So I went to their house and when I checked, truthfully, they've not bought the medication. And when I checked, I realized that it was an issue of money. So I said, okay, uh, let me give them the medicine for free and see what will happen. Uh, when I give them the antibiotic, I noticed that the swelling had gone down a bit, but not to the level 
as I was expecting. So I said, no, this could not be an ordinary swelling. So I started questioning her more about how this issue came about. Then I noticed that uh, in addition to not having money for the medication, there was also uh, even difficulty in providing feeding for this child and other children she has. After nine months, most babies say a few simple words like mama and dada. But Ruth's one-year-old son doesn't appear to hear. He could not even respond to the snapping of my fingers. Though the Sustainable Development Goals are a bold commitment to end poverty in all forms by 2030, for Ruth, eradicating poverty means seeing his son set free from the growth in his head and to hear him utter the word, Mama. The kind of stories that leaves you speechless. If you do have any help for this little girl, you're welcome to bring it in.